Welcome to Veterans United, a program sponsored by the Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. I'm Nick Howland, Navy veteran, your host, and executive director of the Firewatch. In this program, you'll meet two or three veterans who will share their challenges and experiences since leaving active duty. You'll also meet a couple civilians who are doing great things for veterans here in Northeast Florida. In the meantime, you can help. There's a role for everybody. Visit thefirewatch.org and register as a watchstander. Learn to identify the risk signs of veterans in crisis. Learn to get veterans the help they need. Together, we can end veteran suicide here in Northeast Florida. Enjoy the program. Thanks for joining us on 5 Minutes Salute, a program that focuses on the great things that veterans are doing here in Northeast Florida. The program is sponsored by the Firewatch. I'm the host of the program and the executive director of the Firewatch, Nick Howland. With me today is Joe Tillman, um, founder and owner of JNet Enterprises. Joe, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me, Nick. Tell us about JNet Enterprises. I know it's a holding company that has two subsidiaries, SunPro and Allure. Uh, Assure. Assure for life. Yes. Yeah, tell us about it, please. Yeah, well, SunPro is a is really the pro company with three different entities under it. Okay. You have SunPro, which deals with your solar panels. Yep. Then you have BillPro, which is your roofing. Okay. And then you have Energy Pro, which deals with lowering the energy footprint for homeowners yep. so that they could get less panels. So we're a company that are actually trying to sell you less by lowering your footprint, your energy use. So we take JEA's bill. Yep. And one of the biggest things I like to tell the customers, if you make a monthly payment to JEA, right. you can afford solar. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell me how that economics works. Well, you know, the, the uh, we take a look at 12 months of your energy uses. Yeah. Then we build a, uh, a solar program yep. based on what you use. So we basically take the, tra- we transfer the money yeah. that you pay monthly to JEA right. and put it towards your solar. And now you have an opportunity to know when your bill starts, know when your bill ends. It's kind of like a mortgage or a car. Sure. You, 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 it ends and you own the equipment. The other thing is when the sun is up, yeah. you have an ATM on the side of your home. Oh, my gosh. Because it's, it, it, during the daytime, it's yeah. turning backwards and any excess goes into your account. Yeah. So you build up credits and at night you pull from those credits. So that's how the solar, uh, solar panels work. And it helps you reduce the amount of energy that you pull from the grid. Do you find that most customers that call you, the economics works for nearly everybody? Is there a percent that it doesn't work for? There are some that just, yeah. it, it would make sense, but yeah. it's very few. You know, I would right. say 95% yep. of the customers. Now, one that may have a lot of tree uh, foliage around their home, right. then you got to look at the cost of removing those trees because the, the roof has to be exposed. Naturally. Yes. Okay, now tell us about Assure for Life. Assure, what do you do with that business? This is a, uh, something that everyone needs, really. Yeah. And, and because it allows a family to cover seven people yep. for either $50 or $75. So six states, it's only $50 a month, and your yeah. funeral expenses are covered. Yeah. So we as veterans... We know that the government is going to let us lay out rest in the, in the National Cemetery. Right. But we have a bill at the funeral home. Yeah, for sure. So, so the average uh, cost for the funeral is about 6500 Yeah. Well, Sure for Life cover all seven people wow. for that. Now, if you're not from Florida, which you have a lot of people who relocate, but they want to return to their state, that same monthly payment yeah. covers the travel. Yeah. And the policyholder gets a round trip ticket to escort the loved one back. We cover the entire United States, South, Central America and the Caribbean. So, Joe, you're a real entrepreneur, a real (laughs) entrepreneur. But you did 20 years um, in in combat arms with the U.S. Army. Yes. um, yes. And retired. How did you get into this? Well, you know, it was looking at my skill set. Yeah. Being in the infantry, one of the things you had to do as an NCO was yeah. present. Right. Then I was a drill sergeant for three years. Yeah. So yeah. knowing that I had the skill level to present uh, subject matter to, I took that and started looking at ways that I can 
uh, earn a, a living without someone telling me how much I could earn. Right. Was that a difficult transition for you when you retired to now that you've founded all these businesses? It was scary. Yeah. You know, yeah. going the resume, for instance, you know, yeah, right. never had 20 years, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, so no, I know what you mean. just writing a resume and yeah. going through the process and all that. I was saying, you know what? Uh, let me look at. So my first endeavor was in the water business. OK. And uh, so I started working in the water business and I built good relationships. Yeah. And actually, that water business relationship is what led me back to the uh, Sun Pro. Right. And, and the solar. And you learn business in that, yes. you know. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. OK. Now, Joe, you do something else on the side. It's called um, you, you have a, a fascination with African-American military history. Oh, yeah. And, and for years you've run a, a museum. Um, tell yeah. us, tell us about that. Well, you know, taking you back to Duval County during the bus in time period, yeah, right. I, I went uh, from an all black school to a primarily white school in the fifth yep. grade. Yep. One of my friends said to me, Joe, y'all were, you know, y'all were only slaves. He didn't mean yeah. it in a negative way. Yeah. That was the subject matter we were learning. Yes. So as I went through from the sixth, fifth grade up to the military, I didn't see heroes that looked like me. Oh, yeah. Got but in the they're Army. They're there. Yeah, I got in the Army, 24th Infantry Division in Fort Stewart, Georgia. Yeah. My daughter had a Torah leaf patch birthmark, looked like a strawberry. Yeah. And that became a, a big thing for the Pulse. She got on Good Morning America. Yeah. I then was asked about the Buffalo Soldiers, and sure. I had no clue. Sure. And so I went to the library and started researching, and that's yeah. what ignited my passion. And then I started finding out about all these other military units that were in our history that was instrumental in making this country what it is today. Sure. And is there a particular um, conflict or era that you focus on when, or that you were fascinated most by? Well, starting with 1775 yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And then um, if I had to say uh, er uh, one era that I... I'm really excited about it will get into World War Two. OK. Uh, you know, because of the, the, the things that were going on in World War Two. Right. And, right. And, and how it led into the social social change in yeah. the United States. Yeah. So that's that was one of my uh, passions. You know, during that time frame, the, these men and women were fighting on two fronts. Right. It was fighting against the, uh, the Nazi Germany. Yeah. And then they had the double V, which was saying the issues that we had back at home. Absolutely. And, so, and at the time, um, officers enlisted. African American and and white were training in different facilities exactly. and fighting on the same battlefields. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Going over uh, World War One, the yeah. uh, Harlem Hell Fighters. Yeah. Um, the uh, U.S. government sent a letter to the French asking them not to quote spoil the black soldiers, so when they come back home, they would be more. Um, uh, in line with the ways and custom of the United States, yeah. but the French ignored that, right? And they those men became the most decorated unit, and they had a band, and that band, Harlem Hellfighters, three sixty fifth, uh, their band is is the is responsible for the HBCU bands that we have today. Wow. Yeah, so. Oh, that is neat stuff. Uh, Joe, what a fascinating discussion. There's there's a lot here that I'm going to ask about right now. How can people find out about SunPro, about Assure for Life, and about your um, exhibit for the African American Military yeah. History I'm, Program? I'm easy to find on the yeah. web. Just use my name, JoeTillman.com. How do you spell Tillman? T-I-L-L-M-O-N. You got Don't it. put an A on it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can find out about your businesses and your... Um, history passion? They can go through, uh, you can book online. You yeah. can find out about the Sun Pro. You can also find out about Assure for Life. And the third one we did discuss was the health and wellness. They can also find out about that. And they can find out about how to book me to, to do a maybe a Zoom program for their schools. Awesome. Yeah. Joe Tillman, 20 year Army veteran, now an entrepreneur and uh, passion with military history. Thanks very much for being on the five minute salute. Thank you so very much, and I salute you. Likewise. <laughs> Take care, Joe. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us on 5-Minute Salute. I'm Nick Howland, your host, and also the executive director of the Firewatch, Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. Visit thefirewatch.org and learn how you can help. Together, we can end veteran suicide. Hello, I'm John Rutherford from the United States House of Representatives, and I am a watchstander. Hi, I'm Michelle McManaman from Operation Uniform, and I am a watchstander, and so is everyone in my organization. I'm Damika Jackson. I'm the president of the Jacksonville Veterans Chamber of Commerce, and I am a watchstander. 
Hi, I'm Luke Lewis with Xero Realty. I am Ant Stroud with the Ant Stroud Group. I'm Bruce Thompson. I'm the Vice President of the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. And I am a watchstander. I am a watchstander. I'm a watchstander. Each year, over 6,000 U.S. military veterans take their own lives, including one per week in Northeast Florida. The Fire Watch is our community's fight to end veteran suicide. Join us. Become a watchstander today at thefirewatch.org. Together, we will end veteran suicide. Welcome to the 5-Minute Salute, a program focused on the great things that veterans are doing here in our community in Northeast Florida. The program is also sponsored by the Fire Watch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. I'm Nick Howland, your host and executive director of the Fire Watch, and with me today is Mark Maynard of Mark Maynard Insurance Solutions, also 904MedicareHelp.com. Mark, thanks for being with us today. Glad thank to have you. you here. Glad to be here. Tell us about Mark Maynard Insurance Solutions. Yeah, sure. But first, I want to thank you for all you do for Firewatch. Uh, veteran you, suicide is a very uh, important issue today and has been for many years. So thank I you. I appreciate for that. it. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. So Mark Maynard Insurance Solution is really uh, uh, born out of the 800 number commercials yeah. uh, that are on TV with my legendary foot, childhood football uh, hero. Yeah. And uh, so um, I wanted to take a more local approach. Right. And that's why the 904. So, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of the things they're talking about on those commercials are not available in this area or they're available in varying degrees. And, uh, you know, I wanted to take a more straightforward approach and, uh, you know, an educational approach to on uh you know the folks here locally in jacksonville which is a great veterans uh, community by the way so people can go to 904 medical or medicarehelp.com and you can help them navigate how they transition to medicare in retirement and, and that's otherwise. right that's yeah. right so there's basically uh there's a two different ways that you can get into medicare one yeah. is to age in at age 65 which is the uh, entitlement age. Right. And then if you're also disabled and you're, you're collecting social security disability income for two years, you can also, uh, get eligibility to Medicare. So yeah. the thing about it is most people, when they're transitioning in, they don't understand it. Yep. And if they do pick up the phone and call an 800 number, many times it's like drinking out of the fire hose. Yeah, right? Right. So they don't understand a lot of information coming their way. Uh, so what I do is I take my time and I, I explain to them the, the key decision points sure. of the Medicare system that's before even discussing any types of plan enrollments sure. or anything like that. So um, uh, that's, that's kind of the different approach that we have. Well, we were talking before the show and you're a 30 year Navy veteran, about half as a radio man and half as a chief warrant officer. Yes, sir. How did you learn about um, medical insurance and Medicare? Well, that's that's kind of a funny story. So uh, when I was on active duty back in the early 2000s, when my mom was aging into Medicare, yeah. we I was helping her and we dialed the 800 number. Okay. And we got confused and we were going to doctors outside the network yeah. and we were getting a lot of bills. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we totally uh, took that one way off course. Right. So um, over the years, I learned a lot more. And then when I retired from the Navy uh, in 2012, I got my insurance license, uh, ended up kind of taking a little break going out to California to be a uh, Navy contractor for a while. Right. But always kept my license active and, and sort of did it part time out there. And uh, once I started doing Medicare after having my insurance license, it really clicked. I remembered those days of confusion. So that's yeah. what really put my why into action. Sure, sure. Yeah. Which then gave you a purpose similar to probably a purpose you had during sure. your 30 years in the service. Sure. Let's focus on that transition. I, I, you and I could probably spend all day talking about your experiences as a radio man and then a surface warfare sure. officer, yeah. you know, because I, I uh, was a communications officer on board a ship and a surface war, warfare officer. And I'm sure we have great stories, maybe even know people, but I'm, I, I would like to hear about your transition. Did, when you got out, did you, 
did you um, have a, a sense of purpose or a sense of mission that you were looking for? And then it was found when you decided, you know what? I navigated through insurance for my mom. I can do it for others. This is what I'm going to do. And until you found that, how did you handle that transition? Well, it was, for me, I had a lot of assumptions. Yeah. Because uh, I was very highly qualified. Right. I, you know, I, I stood all the officer watches on the ship, the OOD, the TAO. Yep. Yep. I coordinated uh, shipyard availabilities. I had a lot of experience in a lot of stuff. So I had some assumptions that as soon as I got out, people would be knocking my door down. Yeah, know? right. And right. Uh, that did not <laughs> We need happen. a TAO. <laughs> at- <laughs> <laughs> that did not happen, yeah. at least in the way that I thought it would. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, when, I, when it didn't happen, I started just trying to network around town. I got involved with the Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce and right. some other things. Right. And that's what kind of led to the insurance to license right there. Yeah. 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 That's pretty fascinating. So how can people find you at Mark Maynard Insurance Solutions? It, is it as simple as going to 904medicarehelp.com? Yes. 904medicarehelp.com will uh, will take you there. You can set an appointment on that website. Yeah. You can, of course, all the phone numbers there. My background is there, uh, the methods that I use, the three-step process that I yep. use to help people understand and then obtain Medicare benefits uh, that, that, that really are focused on their particular needs. Yep. What a great service, Mark. Thanks, yeah. thanks well, for thank doing that. Thank you for that. having and me. Thanks for your 30 years in the Navy. Oh, really well, appreciate, appreciate it. that. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of 5 Minute Salute, a program sponsored by the Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. There's a role for everybody to play in the fight to end veteran suicide. Visit thefirewatch.org to learn more. Thank you. Welcome to 5 Minutes Salute, a program sponsored by the Firewatch and focused on highlighting some of the great things that veteran heroes are doing for other veterans in our Northeast Florida community. I'm Nick Howland, host and also executive director of the Firewatch. And with me today is one of those veteran heroes who really needs no introduction, Dee Caranta. And uh, Dee runs Northeast Florida Women's uh, Veterans. So Dee, tell us a little bit about Northeast Florida Women of Veterans. And actually, before you do, thank you so much for being here thank with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Well, Northeast Florida Women Veterans was founded in 2012. Um, it was founded because at that time, there was absolutely no services in Northeast Florida that was unique for women veterans. Yep. And uh, there was a need, and I saw the need because of where I work, which was in Career Source, and there was just an increase of women veterans coming in, yeah. needing help, yeah. and didn't know where to go. So I took that, what I call my leap of faith, and uh, walked out and said, I got to do this. And so, you know, it's been my journey uh, going into 10 years. Uh, Northeast Florida women veterans really help women get back on their feet. We say uh, being the best they can be. Right. Um, anything from financial uh, assistance to workshops. Sure. And of course, we now have the the shelter. Um, so there's quite a few programs that we have there, uh, basically catered to women veterans. And what's unique is that we also. Uh, in some of our programs that accept young ladies between the age of 18 and 25 who are vet- daughters of veterans. Right. So they are able to go through some of our programs too. Well, you're ahead of your time in founding <laughs> Northeast Florida Women Veterans because the VA's data, the last several annual reports that they've released have highlighted the fact that women veterans are upwards of two times, 2.2 times more likely to die by suicide right. than women non-veterans. Right. They also highlight another thing, and that is that veterans age 18 to 35 are at the highest um, wow. risk of suicide. Wow. So what you're doing is directly helping yes. reduce veteran suicides. And yes. you mentioned um, you started focused mostly on transition, helping women in transition, but you also do financial assistance and the like? Yes, we do provide financial assistance. And let me let me say this about our, our technique when it yeah. comes to suicide. Um, when it comes to mental health, period, right. uh, we usually provide 
pills and counseling. You yeah, know, you yeah. come back for your weekly counseling. Yeah. Um, what we've tried to do is approach it in a holistic way and supplement that by offering like our Her Total Wellness program right. that really touches on all the barriers that would come up. When, the, when you're going through counseling, you always got some other things yeah. that are going on. Absolutely. And so we try to uh, meet the needs or help them by providing the resources. And if we can do it directly, we do. Um, help them through that program so that they can be on their feet. And, right. and it's not necessarily for someone who's not on their feet. Um, you can be successful and still have trouble transitioning because it's it's a mental thing. Absolutely. Life is different outside the yeah. uniform. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, you help so many women who are in a uh, housing crisis, who are, who are homeless or at risk of homelessness. Yes. And that's another spot of, of high vulnerability for veteran suicide. We have it found is. that male and female veterans who are at risk of homelessness are four times more likely to attempt suicide, Right, which just puts the, the folks that you're helping are some of the folks that need the help most. That's true. Can you tell me a little bit about your new shelter that Northeast Florida Women so, Veterans started? In? Her Space is called Her Space, and yep. that's the program, and we're at the lighthouse down on the beach. Yep. Um, we have been wanting to do this for a long time because a lot of the shelters that accept women, there's so much red tape, and then you may be out three days before you can even get a bed. For us, we 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 don't have federal funds or anything like that. So we yeah. don't have the restraints that other entities have. Right. Um, but we opened the second week in June and the beds were filled. We, we have seven beds wow. and they were already filled that first week. So we know that there's a need. Yeah. Um, and like you said, homelessness really affects our mental health. When you've been in uniform, for so many years and then all of a sudden you have the responsibility of making decisions that you never had to make before. Oh yeah. Um, your expectations of what it would be like outside of the base yep. uh, is not necessarily reality and it can really affect your mental health. I, Absolutely. I, I definitely understand that. Her space sounds like such an amazing resource it for is. our female veterans. It is. Speaking of, you mentioned being in uniform, you were in uniform for 20 years. I was. Air Force. Tell yes. us about your service. So I, I, you know, spent 20 years in the Air Force. Yeah. Uh, I was an admin person. Mm -hmm. So that meant I could travel pretty much anywhere. And I spent most of my time overseas. Yeah. Um, coming out of the military, I, uh, it was a transition sort of. I spent another five years overseas because of my husband, okay. uh, who was civil service. So I didn't transition right then. It right. was after that yep, yep. <laughs> that I came back to the States and found myself trying to find somewhere what to live. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and not everybody is going to accept you like you're great, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, being a veteran. So you've got to get your, get in there and do it yourself. Yeah, right. Was yeah. that your main challenge? Is, it is was. You had just done 20 years plus another five years mm -hmm. with your husband's service where everything was planned right and now you're out on your own i was out on i was yeah. definitely out of my yeah. and not only that you if you lived on base uh, yep. most of your career you don't really know what resources are out there right and i went through taps in oklahoma city okay so i'm in jacksonville now those yeah. resources are not the same here in jacksonville for sure so uh, i didn't have a clue what local resources were available i just happened to walk into uh, the vet the vet center yep downtown didn't even know what a vet center was <laughs> really yeah and the vet center really helped and, and they sent me down to a uh, career source okay yeah because i was job searching i was right. looking for resources so they sent me to resources and i met this incredible uh veteran who worked in career source uh bobby johns and he helped me get my first job with the chamber of commerce so wow um it it was uh it was quite an experience just seeing how uh, different I was from the people I grew up with and even my family. Yeah. So that the transition is not just about work yeah, or your right. schedule. It's about reconnecting to your family and, and the friends that you knew. It, it's quite different. It, it can it can cause some problems. One hundred percent. Yes. And those are two great resources that you found in the Vet Center and in Career Source. Yes. And did that experience 
help you decide, I'm going to start Northeast Florida Women Veterans? Uh, yes, because I was working. Uh, I actually eventually got a job after I left the chamber because it was a one year contract. Yeah. And uh, I went to Career Source and I was there for nine years. OK. And I was there as a vet rep. So yeah. um, I knew there had to be something done for our women veterans, because typically when people say veterans, yep. It's changing, yep. but it, you yep. think of the G.I. Joe. Yeah. Um, but but I'm hoping that the work that we've done has changed the mindset, especially in Northeast Florida. Absolutely. I'm has. hoping that we've made a difference. In you identified the gap and you filled it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we opened the box. We didn't know what, <laughs> <laughs> what we were into. Yeah. But but we've hung in there. Well, and you find the, the <laughs> challenges and you you overcome them. You yes. know, one of them being how difficult it is for yes. women and veterans to find shelters yes. in Northeast Florida yes. and, and you're solving that seven beds for now and hopefully many many yeah. more in the future we, we hope to expand and but we have yeah. some great partners in in the community that, you know like coins right and uh, Wakiva and yep. some of those where we can get some help with with the counseling yep yep uh, so I'm really really grateful for that I, we have some fantastic vet <laughs> we have a fantastic vet community for sure here in Northeast Florida for sure. And so it, sh it shouldn't be a problem trying to find uh, resources for our veterans. You got it. hundred yeah. percent. And speaking of finding resources for our veterans, D, how can people find out and help your mission at Northeast Florida Women Veterans? So we, we can, uh, you can go to our website, yep. of course, uh, www.forwomenvets.org, yep. F-O-R, womenvets.org. Or uh, you can call us at uh, 904, I always get this number wrong, <laughs> 904-862-3069. All right. Yeah. No, it's 6039. Oh, 6039. We'll clarify 0039. that. Yes. Yeah, we'll see if we can't put it up yes, in the bottom of the screen. Yes, yes, it's, it's H. It's H. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, Dee, thank you so much, not only for your service in the Air Force, but for yeah. the service that you're giving to female veterans yeah. in Northeast Florida. Yeah. You are truly a veteran hero doing amazing things <laughs> in our community, and, and thank you so much for thank that. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of Five Minute Salute, a program sponsored by the Firewatch. There's a role for everybody in ending veteran suicide. Visit us at thefirewatch.org and learn how you can help. You can learn the warning signs of a veteran in crisis. You can learn how to ask a veteran if they need help and you can learn how to get veterans the help they need. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of Veterans United. The Firewatch is Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. There's a role for everybody. Join us as a watchstander. Visit thefirewatch.org and learn to identify the risk signs of veterans in crisis, how to ask veterans if they need help, and how to get veterans the help they need. Together, we will end veteran suicide. The Firewatch, Northeast Florida's fight to end veteran suicide. Today is military... Okay, it was going so well.